Hey everyone, this is Pay for Life, and in today's P4L review, we'll be taking a look at a third-party transformer from Mastermind Creations, and this is a exclusive from the Singapore Toys, Games, and Comic Convention show that was held uh, the other month, and this is a recolor of Mastermind Creations combiner Feral Rex. This one's called R20 and Nero Rex, the Moratorus Enforcer. So thanks a lot to Dr. Killinger from Killinger Customs. This is actually his um, Nero Rex that he sent over to me so I could review it for you guys. So thanks a lot, give him a shout out to him. Um, but let's go ahead and get into packaging review. So as you can see, or actually, actually you might not be able to tell, this is a huge box. So look, look how big this is. It's like two and a half palms tall. And this is kind of expected given the size of um, Feral Rex or Nero Rex. So not surprising there, but it's really nice that it comes in this nice collector's box, which is a, a first, I think, for a third-party combiner of this size. I, I know we had some with um, Make Toys, but Mass My Creations, Unique Toys, any of those guys really have kind of shied away from doing box sets just because, um, look, look how huge it is, the shipping on this guy was would probably pretty crazy. Um, it also comes in this nice larger shipping carton which has a nice silhouette of Nero Rex and then the Mastermind Creations logo with their little penguin guy. I just wanted to show that off. It's very nice that they had a separate shipping box for that as well to protect this really nice box. And the box itself is in the same style that we saw from the rest of the Feral Rex crew, um, the Feral Cons. So you can see a really nice big render of the new kind of teal blue, um, purple and black gray deco that we're getting with with Nero Rex. The top, I'm not going to flip this around, it's just um, some more of the same. On this side over here, we do get Neo Rex the Mortoris, Mortoris Enforcer. A little render down here. More of the same on this side. Not really much to talk about. I don't even know why I do packaging reviews. It's pretty pointless. Uh, the bottom has some warning labels and that's about it. And I apologize. This is just such a big box. It's really hard to um, handle this far back. But on the back we do get a couple of other pro product images, promo images. This one's really showing that uh, Rex can be extended to have uh, larger um, legs, longer legs. Also shows them with and without wings or wings folded up maybe. Uh, on this side here we get a nice big image of him with his huge combined sword. Down here you also have him kind of sporting it on his back. And then over here just kind of a leaping um, pose here. And I'm not sure what this character in the back is. If you know, go ahead and leave it in the comment section and educate me. But that's really it for packaging review. On the outside, let's go ahead and get the box open. Out of the exterior box, you have a really cool packaging um, layout here with Nero Rex. So he comes basically in combined form. Uh, he comes with Leo Ducks as his, the main body piece up here. You have a Talon as the left arm. Left arm mode, Tigris in right arm mode. Uh, I think that's you have Fortis in right leg, Bovis in left leg. He has his two feet here. Uh, he also has his combined weapon there, his combined sword for the most part. There are one or two pieces that are left out. And then he has Talon's wings or the combined mode wings on the left side there. Uh, a few other things that come in the package. He does get and instruction sheet combined mode. It has an again combined mode render there. He does have a stack card which I'll open up in a second. Um, in addition to in addition to the instructions, again a very nice render. And it comes with some stats. He's basically off the charts on most everything except intelligence and speed. And his um Booklet is really nice, just very much the same form as we saw before. Yeah, more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. But yeah, let's get that off to the side. Uh, 
as I said, he does come with some other pieces on the side, so he does have some of the daggers that make up the, the cross of the hilt, uh, just because that would come out, jet out to the side like that. So they do this so to protect the sword from getting damaged. It does come with those extra pieces, which were called the completion kit, that were the forearm fill fillers uh, for the different characters. A lot of people complained about that, so later on, uh, Master My Creations provided this with some of the later releases as forearm fillers and forearm fillers and weapons. His crotch piece. He does have the friction kit, which comes with the um, kind of rubber pieces that go on the bottom here, as as well as uh, these small small strips. I I'm actually not going to install. Um, Either of these, just because this is not my kit, so I don't want to have. I don't want to install this um, because it's not mine. Same thing with the extra bonus, which was kind of blurred out before. These are the King's Claws. This was a third-party upgrade kit from uh, Professor Heisenberg, and I actually did a review on this set and their weapons before. I'm not going to open this because this is a sealed baggy and again this is not mine if you want to see what these look like go ahead and click on the link that is floating at the top right here or in the um, description I'll provide a link to these as well so now that we have all the members out of the packaging let's go ahead and get into the review we're gonna go ahead and start off with combined mode review just because these guys are already in combined mode uh, so then we're gonna move on to probably alt mode and then robot mode and uh, for the in individual bots, you can kind of see how the color schemes have changed. But let's go ahead and get started with some combining of the weapons. So like I said, the Oppenheimer sword isn't fully combined in the packaging just because it would make the packaging kind of awkward and uh, actually probably damage the weapons. So we're going to go ahead and complete that. What you really need to do is split the kind of um, middle section here. And then you'll go get, I forget if this is Fortis or Bovis's dagger, but you're going to slip that onto the side here in between those two halves, like so. And you'll see these little notches here and down there. Those need to fit in to the corresponding pegs. And then you can sandwich them in between those two Leo Ducks halves. All right. And then these daggers, I believe these are Talon's daggers, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong here. Um, it could be Tigress's, who knows. In any case, what you're going to need to do is actually pull these, um, this whole combined section out. And, it, and you're going to stick this little tab here into this slot, like so. There, and then you're going to go ahead and, and replace that. And just slot that in here. It's a nice tight fit to complete that side of the Oppenheimer sword. Same thing on this end. You don't really have to pull off, pull out the entire section if you don't want to. It's probably safest to do that though, instead of just trying to wedge it in um, without pulling out the entire sword, sword piece. So yeah, go ahead, tab that in, and reassemble, like so. And there we go. The Oppenheimer sword is complete, and it's still massive, and it's still an awesome combiner weapon. My favorite combiner weapon that uh, any any company has done so far. And it's in this nice metallic silverish, um, and a tint of purple. I mean, it's very subtle, but it's really, really nice. I, I definitely like it. Hope it, hopefully it's coming up on the camera as well. And you can see it just bling it up on camera underneath the lights. So we'll put that Oppenheimer sword off to the side. The combined mode gun is already completely combined, so no need to worry about that. You can extend it or go ahead and retract it. We'll just extend it and move it off to the side here. Let's go ahead and uh, install the crotch piece. And if I'm not mistaken, the way this works is you have to open up the entire crotch piece. So it's folded like that. Just open that up. Open it up like that. 
you have to rotate it like so. And then you can untap it on the side here. The reason why you do that is because it connects both in the back and the front. So the back has these kind of two tab pieces and pegs that go right in here. So you're going to go ahead and get it positioned. It's on the lower side. Like so. Sorry, I'm just trying to get these legs out of the way. And then you're going to bring this around to the front, and then there is a tab here that you pull out that goes into the crotch there. Sorry, trying to do this on camera is always a challenge. I know I make that excuse a lot, but it's really true. And there we go, then we have the crotch piece installed. While we have Leo Ducks, go ahead and fold his combiner warts down. These as well. One thing I did want to mention while we have him is that his cannons still do extend, but they still don't really click into place or you can see them falling back. I wish they had made at least a couple of adjustments to tighten up those tolerances there because uh, that was a shame before and it's still a shame now. Alright, so let's get Leo Ducks in wing mode. So here again you can use the ratchet port in combination with these four tabs here. Uh, I find that to be make it make it really really sturdy but also really kind of challenging to pull off. So I'm just going to use the four pegs and I find that to be more than sufficient. If you want to use the combiner port as well you're more than welcome to do so. Um, we're going to go ahead and pull out the combiner mode fist from the hand there. So the way they're, uh, the fist from the foot, the way they're tabbed in is down here. You just need to push this off to the side and untab it. Then you have the left hand. Oh, right hand. This was the right hand. So let's put that off to the side there. Same thing on the other side though. Pull that out. All right, so let's go ahead and get Talon in position first. We'll go ahead and tilt his head around the other, oh no. We're not using that combiner for it. We're gonna tilt this around so his tilt's not in the way. We're gonna open up his legs like so. And throw these in the middle. Oh, I should have I should have turned this this way. There we go. Uh, if you want to, if you want to make use of his weapon, you can obviously turn this tail to the back, and then peg on the gun, like so, using these two tabs. Same thing with Tigris. Both his legs, and there we go. Get Fortis in here. I'm going to split his legs. And the foot comes up like this and rotates like so. And you need to come in kind of from behind and through the middle here to get it up and seated. And then once you have that done, you can close up both sides again. Sorry for doing that off camera. Same thing on this side with Bobis. Again, flip up the ball joint and rotate it around. Split Bobis' legs. Get this up and seated. It's easiest to do on one side first. And then close that up, and then you'll get both seated, no problem. Now we're ready to combine everyone. And this is probably going to take place off camera, at least the top half, but go ahead and slot in each of the 
legs. And there's really no way I'm going to get this guy really on camera the entire way. Bring up his wings, fan them out a bit. All right, not too shabby. Again, if you want to tab this on to one of the arms, just use these two tabs here, and the corresponding slots for a very tight fit. Oops. And then the Oppenheimer sword, you can use his tabs on his sword. He has a bunch of them. Make use of any two you really like. And tab that into the inner part of his palm. Oops. Uh, because of the way the sword is designed, or the tail is designed, you got to make sure you're holding it the right way or it's going to droop. But yeah, there we go. We have we have uh, Nero Rex in combined mode, and he looks awesome. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of the um, whole com um, not combiners. Uh, I'm talking about the Nemesis decos. I don't I don't really understand them unless they're a part of canon in some way, shape, or form. But this one looks really good. Purple and black is just an awesome combination. And I'm not saying that just because I'm from uh, I went to school in Baltimore, and uh, <laughs> I'm a pseudo Ravens fan. Uh, I'm just saying that because it just looks really nice. And the metallic that they use in both the purple highlights that we see here on the chest and all throughout, as well as, again, that silverish, bluish purple that we're seeing look really good. They really, really just stand out against the black. Uh, again, there are some additional stuff that the kit came with that I'm not going to install. Again, the King's Claws and the Friction Kit, but they're easy enough to install. Uh, I'm not going to explain that. Here we have Nero Rex next to the original mold of Feral Rex. And obviously these are the same exact mold. They're going to look exactly the same uh, as far as parts go. But overall, the the colors look um, obviously a lot different. This one looks way more cohesive given that he is all kind of black and all purple, metallics, and grays, while the original Feral Rex has a lot more um, differences in color going on. He has some yellows on some characters and orange on others, and while they do carry a lot of the black throughout, it's not nearly as, um, I don't want to say monochrome, but uh, a lot more colors going on, so it's a little bit more complex in the color design. But that's not to say I don't like the original Fair Rocks. He's still my favorite combiner. I just think he's probably one of my favorite recolors, and I, I personally don't like recolors all that much. Um, I complained about that recently with Masterpiece line, but this one just looks really nice. So if you're into Nemesis, there's no way you're going to be able to avoid this guy. He just he just looks really really good. Um, one thing that I did want to show off. And combined mode is also the lights in his helmet. So here is original Rex with his nice red glowing eyes. And what color does Neo Rex have? A really cool teal. And I really like how that looks. I love that they went with that color, the teal blue, as opposed to any other color they could have gone with. Um, I, I guess this is just a really nice color that they thought would go with the, with, the, with the rest of the figure. And no, no other part of the figure has that kind of teal blue, but it does just make the eyes really pop. And I like it a whole lot. Very easy to install. Uh, just on the back, there's two screws on the bottom. Just pop that out. I'm not gonna show that just because it's very challenging to do so on camera with a figure this large. Uh, one thing I did wanna show since I didn't have the King's Call installed, um, and since uh, Dr. Killinger, Killinger Customs, is um, nice enough to 
let me borrow his Neurorex, they are planning on um, releasing their own set of the claws, claw add-on for a Neurorex, which is a slightly darker gray. So they're planning on releasing that. And that's the set I currently have, and I always have standard on my Feral Rex. And the, the difference between the King's Claw and the Dr. Killinger or, or Gilded Concoctionist Intense Claws are that they're actually an entire replacement part as opposed to just an add-on part that slides over the existing fist. Again, I did a comparison of them in my review, so I'll go ahead and link that. You can see that here or in the description below. I'll provide a link there. So yeah, that, that's pretty much it for combined mode. Um, you're not getting anything crazy new, obviously. This is a an existing mold, but he just looks really nice. The back not as nice just because it has more of the gray going on as, as opposed to some of the metallics that I think really make this figure shine. All right, let's go ahead. And we're not doing transformation because that would just make this video you know, 10 hours long, especially when I do it. So let's go ahead and take a cut and we'll come back in uh, alt mode. All right, let's start off these alt mode reviews. And here's Talon in alt mode. You can see he looks very nice still with the metallic purple and black. A couple things to note that um, back before in Feral Rex days, people were com complaining that the talons when in combined mode blended too much with the fist. Uh, they're actually different colors this time, a slightly darker gray um, than this light gray and the claws here and the talons here on Talon. So yeah, just a quick note there. Um, one odd thing that I never noticed before, but it is true on Re original Rex as well, that he does have a rubber gasket around his combiner port, and none, none of the other combiner ports on Leo Ducks have that, but both Talons have that, so I find that strange. Uh, in any case, this is what he looks like in alt mode. He still has those great wings. Um, just really quickly let's do a comparison with the original Talon. And you can see by and large they just took um, anywhere that they were kind of like paint apps um, and added the metallic purple or this kind of silverish purple or purplish silver. Um, on the chest, they changed that and painted that. So there's a lot more paint overall than bare plastic on the original, which is obviously a great thing. On the back here, again, you see more paint apps all the way around on the missiles that are found on his tail and so forth, and on the backpack itself. Even on the wings here, again, metallic purple paint. So really, you're getting a lot more paint. And considering that this guy was uh, cons considerably cheaper when you converted it from the Singapore, I guess, dollar, I don't even know what the Singapore <laughs> currency is called, I'm ignorant like that, um, to US dollars and what they were selling it for on places like um, uh, some on online retailers, it was actually much cheaper than getting the original Rex, so more pay naps, which are great. Bringing in Fortis, we'll bring in all the Fortis as well. Again, lots of nice pay naps all the way around. On the top, in these sections here, on the chest piece, or the back piece for alt mode. The only place that's really left kind of bare and kind of dull are the legs, which are all just gray plastic. One thing to note is that I noticed that his eyes are metallic red and so are Bovis's, but the rest are this weird kind of yellow, green, gold. And I found that odd because on the original Rex, they didn't all have the same eyes. Uh, Leo Ducks in alt mode had red eyes and the rest had these goldish yellow eyes. But I find it odd that this time these guys had red eyes and the rest just had the yellow, including Leo Ducks. So, uh, just a funny note there. 
And um, one thing I did notice, I didn't notice it before, is that the actual combiner ports that ratchet on um, on the legs and on the arms seem way, way tighter, so stronger, which is good. But um, this, they were almost too tight. Like I, I, I think for Fortis and himself, I had to actually uh, use um, some leverage to get it to fold down in into his chest for alt mode. Anyway, the paint apps looks really good. Again, overall, you get um, more paint apps because you got like the paint apps up here, all along the legs, on the back as well. You get extra paint apps here in these grooves, and on the chest, and on the head. Uh, on the bottom, really, you don't, you're not seeing much except on the feet here. But again, more paint apps, which are which are really nice, especially given the nice color. But otherwise, identical. Let's get these guys out the way and go ahead and bring in Tigris. So first, we'll bring in. The, the Nero tig Tigris. Again, look really good from all sides. More paint apps. More. The only thing I don't like about um, Tigris is that his back leg is just plain uh, gray plastic while his front leg is black. I think it would have been better to have that uh, be matching. It's just kind of weird to have his front legs different from his back legs. The original Tigris had the same front and hind legs. But yeah, doing a comparison again, more paint apps on the legs, on the shoulders, on the head here as well. And then on the bottom, you get that one extra piece here. So yeah, again, not not no difference in the mold, obviously. Bring in Bovis. Bovis again featuring the red eye for some particular reason, unknown reason. More paint apps you're going to see all the way around. Pretty much the same as Bovis. So bringing in the Fortis again, the legs have more paint apps overall both the front and back. The top again has more paint like on the, the what would be the robot mode chest area down here on on the uh, knee areas here and then on the bottom on what will be the robot mode feet. Uh, and I think the last figure that we have is Leo Ducks. So one thing to note on this Leo Ducks is that it's actually misassembled. So uh, I'm sorry, Killinger, Dr. Killinger. Um, this one's actually misassembled. This piece in here, it won't actually collapse in or fold in because there's supposed to be a gap here, which I'll show here. There's supposed to be a small gap here to, to allow this piece to fold in. Not present here because it's flipped around the other way, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and fix that because, again, it's not my figure. If I damage it, I'll be in trouble. But I'm just going to let Dr. Killinger know so that he can get that fixed up. Again, really nice paint applications all around. And with the exception of just that misassembly, he looks really good. Again, my only complaint being that I think it would have been better to have the front and hind legs the same color, because now you have also different colored feet, which is just kind of odd. And so odd that, um, you know, Bovis, people complained about it with Bovis, and Mass Migrations actually gave red hooves later on. So I just find it kind of odd that they did it here. Bringing in the original Leo Ducks. You can see that he has solid here. But then again, I guess he does have different colored feet on the front. 
But yeah, you can see the extra paint apps here that are missing here on the kind of front leg elbow, elbows, on the side skirts. Um, just more detailed paint apps here. So they actually left some of this black. And then on the guns, while these were kind of uh, chrome vacuum, um, vacuum chromed, these are just painted, and I don't know. Uh, the previously I said it was just kind of weird for these to be vacuum chrome because no other piece of this figure is, um, and I think I still feel that way here. I think these met metallic painted ones are better overall, and then you also get those nice extra painted details here and here. some extra painted details on the neck piece that covers the robot mode head and that's about all so yeah those that's the comparison in alt mode give me a second again and I'll go ahead and transform these guys into robot mode and we'll be right back alright starting off round three here we have everyone in robot mode starting with Talon Again, we're just really talking about what these guys look like compared to their alternate original versions. So let's go ahead and bring in uh, the Talon. You can see again, really nice paint all the way around. Again, some added paint details that you really didn't have in the first figure. So to illustrate that, We'll go ahead and take a look. So these crotch pieces here, the chest, you know, the shoulder pieces up here, all that painted. And unlike the original, which had these weird mismatched thigh thickener pieces, which were a different color orange, these are just black on Talon here, and they look really good. They blend in really well. Again, the wings. Nice, um, nice paint metallic detail. On the back, we get some differing paint apps here on the tail. No paint apps up here where it is here, but we do get a lot on the backpack itself and on the wings. Get a little bit down on the calf too, I didn't notice that. So yeah, by and large, very similar. Oh, like the, the guns also have some minor painted detail. So by and large, I do actually like Talon a lot. He's one of my favorite uh, of the molds. But uh, I think he definitely benefits a lot from having more paint apps. Bobus. So Bobus, again, sporting that same purple and black. The one thing I will say is that it actually, this gray actually does stand out a bit against the black and purple, um, in, especially in this robot mode. I don't know why, um, but it just looks a, a little bit out of place. Maybe just because all the rest look really high quality, this looks kind of out of place. Um, one thing I will note is that the knees here, the paint applications aren't the cleanest, there is some overspray all around here which can be easily cleaned up um, just something to note that's the only place I've currently seen it have uh, bad paint applications on all these figures so far again on the back the face also sports a really nice metallic green the same kind of green that the other figures have in alt mode eyes all right, let's bring in the original Bovis. Get these painted knees here. And that's really about it, I think, as far as extra painted on the front. You do get some on the side here, on the legs down there. Oh, I'm sorry, I, miss, I may have missed these. I don't know if these are molded or painted. They look painted, these little missile launchers down here. Oh, and then the feet were also painted. I 
I was actually thinking they they might have um, applied a few more paint apps that they're not as prevalent in his robot mode as it was in his alt mode, I think. All right, getting these guys out of the way. Let's bring in Tigris. Tigris, the lanky of the group. Oh, sharing a very similar mold with Talon. One thing I'll note here, and it's going to be hard to see, so let me zoom in real quick, is that the molded detail on his face is really rough on this one. Come on, let's see if we can focus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time capturing it, but yeah, you can kind of see it there. It's really rough. There we go. Not very clean there, which is unfortunate. It's the only other place that I've seen um, drastic mold variations. So he's predominantly black, which is okay since he's pretty stealth. Um, again, some overspray issues on the knee area here, which is confusing because um, there weren't there wasn't overspray here. But the difference is that this was only the front part, not the little ridges, while this one went all covered the entire um, raised area, which is probably why it caused a little bit of overspray. But he actually seems to have, he seems to be one of the figures that in robot mode looks like he probably has maybe about the same or maybe a little bit less, at least in some areas, is pretty obvious. So he does have this extra crotch piece painted and the head here, but he doesn't have the knees painted, which is different, but he does have the um, shins painted. On the side, you do see a lot more. This whole area is painted. Parts of the arm, forearm, even this piece here, which is a minor detail. It's kind of cool to see that. It almost mimics stripes of a tiger, which is very cool. And then some painted details up at the top on the shoulders. Again, Tigers is sporting, even though his eyes are very small, he's sporting the same kind of yellowish golden green eyes. And then some minor details there, which we saw before in alt mode. Oh, one thing, I did want to mention that Tigris, the original Tigris came with a little A little bomb piece that fit in his chest, which I'm not going to be able to get out. And it actually came with a, I think a gold metallic painted one, or molded one, uh, if you had a special pre-order. I forget, I forget where you had to pre-order from. But he actually doesn't have anything in his chest. Nothing, nada. Which is a little unfortunate, but honestly, it's such a minor detail that who really cares? Uh, I never played with that. That just stayed in there and I totally forgot about it until I was transforming him and then remember there was a compartment down there. Bring in Fortis. Uh, one Fortis at a time. Doing a quick 360 again. Back's pretty plain. He does have a little bit of paint around the neck area of his rhino head which is kind of cool. Again, the knees have a bit of overspray. Seems to be a common issue. But he also has a bit of overspray on the chest area as well. Not as clean. Oh, a little bit of flashing here I didn't notice before. Nothing terrible. But yeah, these uh, the knee areas seem to be a problem area for the figures in robot mode. Bringing in his original. Again, lots of paint on the chest, on the shoulders here, the knees, which we talked about, the feet, and then coming along to the side, the calves, the arms. He is missing the paint details on the alt mode cheek, though, which I, I didn't notice before. So, Leo Ducks. 
looks like he's sporting the most paint apps. Maybe because he's the chest figure, but he has a lot of paint in a lot of different places. Like this whole joint here is painted. A lot of the side skirt and front skirt are painted. The knees and this lower area here on the ankles. On the side he also has some of that. Some on the knees there. And then all this on the shield and also the lower calves. The original figure again is being outclassed in a lot of areas. He doesn't have those painted elbows. He doesn't have the painted details on these this neck piece up here. He doesn't have the painted details on the ankles down here. And again, slightly different um, paint applications or choice of how the paint was applied here. But unlike the other figures, Leo Ducks has really, really clean paint apps. And on the guns, again, no vac chrome. It's painted metallic purple, as well as having red paint detail, which is, I think, the only red paint detail on this entire set. And then a little bit of metallic paint up there. But overall, much cleaner paint details on Leo Ducks than on the rest of the figures. At least in all mode. Alright. Uh, one quick thing, I did want to do some quick comparisons uh, just with these guys in robot mode with some other figures, other Nemesis figures, just to give you an idea of the themes that's, that's going with the colors. So obviously most of these kind of Nemesis um, figures sport a black deco. A lot of them do feature a teal um, or purple, which we do see a lot of the purple here. We do see uh, that silverish kind of teal, I guess you can call it, in the eye of combined mode for Nero Rex. And of course sporting some gray bare plastic. This also gives you a good idea for scale. The Nemesis Prime. Again, you can see the black and purple along with the teal color, which I really like that combination. Um, the only thing that really Nemesis Prime has going for him that's a little bit different is the red here. But then I guess we do have a little bit of red. <laughs> a little tiny bit of red down there. Again, giving you a good idea for scale. All right, uh, I really think that's about it. Again, this wasn't supposed to be a full review. Um, I'm not doing obviously any transformations or uh, detailed articulation since we've gone over that. If you want to see any of that, um, you can go ahead and click on the individual links for the Fair original Fair Rex reviews that I did before in the description below. All right, let's go ahead and get these guys combined back up and finish off with final thoughts. All right, well, you guys didn't know, and you guys didn't see it, um, this review took forever for me to transform all these figures back and forth, and uh, I'm glad it's finally coming to an end, even though I do love this figure, and I wanted to give you guys a good review. Um, hopefully this was helpful. One last thing before I go into final thoughts, um, I didn't show off the guns in comparison, or the weapons separated. They are actually painted differently. It's not like they only swapped out the gunmetal for purple. You can actually see even some very small like silver detail here, which is so minute. I can't believe they went out of their way to get that painted. It's pretty incredible. And red dot here as well. Same thing on here. You get a little red dot all the way, red square, all the way back in here, which again, I, I, I find it very confusing that they would go through all this much trouble for such minor details but I mean that that is kind of MMC they're they're kind of crazy like that they like doing small detailed stuff you can also see a small orange stripe here on the barrel so for final thoughts I really do appreciate this mold having to review it again a second time really did make me appreciate how well it's held up um, since it's been completed and it's still I think it is still my favorite looking 
um, mold overall. Just the proportions are great. Um, the fact that they actually did go ahead and tighten some of these joints, I didn't notice it at first, but comparing them with my original Ferrorex, I could definitely tell that the ball joints were tighter, the ratchets were tighter um, on all the ports, as well as the actual um, joints themselves uh, were, were tightened. The fact that they went ahead and did that, it's great. I do wish they had tightened up some of the other things, like the, the guns, which um, aren't that tight. And I wish they had uh, fixed some of the areas that um, people had complaints about before. But overall, by and large, I think this guy looks fantastic, especially with this nice blue eye going on. Um, so my recommenda recommendation is if you can get him um, at a decent price, definitely get him. Uh, the price that they had at the Singapore show was honestly pretty ridiculous. I think it translated to something like $420 US. And if you could get that shipped to the US for a decent amount, you're still under $500 for a really great um, combiner. Uh, I, I wanted to touch on uh, a question that people have been asking whether they're going to be doing a um, Fellas Saber repaint to match this uh, Nemesis Deco. I don't know. If I find out at TFCon or before or after, I'll go ahead and let you guys know in an update on uh, Facebook or something like that. But yeah, uh, hopefully this review was helpful to you guys. Uh, it took a really, really long time to do, so ho hopefully it was uh, useful. If you guys have any questions or comments or if I missed something, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down if you don't like it, but uh, at least leave a comment and let me know what I could do to make it better aside from keeping it shorter and changing my annoying voice. Um, things I probably won't be able to do. Uh, as always, if you want to keep up to date with my news and reviews, go ahead and click the subscribe button that's floating around here or go ahead and follow me on Facebook at Pig for Life Reviews. And while he's not available right now um, at any of the retailers I know, um, if Toy Dojo, my sponsor, goes goes ahead and gets a, a set of these, uh, I'll make sure to um, provide an update and also update the link in the description below. Alright, that's all for today everyone. Hope you have a good one.